Today, we are going to be comparing the 16-inch MacBook Pro with Apple's 13-inch MacBook Pro. What's up, everyone? How are you guys doing today? The best fans on YouTube. I am excited. We are here to talk about the new 16-inch MacBook Pro again. We've talked about it a lot. But this case, we are going to compare the 16-inch MacBook Pro against Apple's 13-inch MacBook Pro. Because when the 16-inch came out, there was no smaller accompanying version. We likely may see one early next year, but here we're gonna talk about the differences between what is currently in Apple's lineup. You can choose between the 13-inch MacBook Pro or the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and we're gonna break down all of the differences to help you make the best informed decision. So let's go ahead and dive into comparing the 16-inch MacBook Pro and the 13-inch MacBook Pro. We're gonna break down this video into a few different sections. First, we're gonna talk about the design of the new machines and what the differences are there. Then we're gonna talk about the specs and performance differences between the two. And then we're gonna talk about any extenuating features that we wanna mention and call out between them. And then finally, we're gonna talk about uh, the price points and really what our recommendation is, whether you're looking at the 13 or the 16 inch model. So let's go ahead and dive in with the designs of the new machines. Looking at them side by side, there's a definite difference, but the biggest thing is the 16 inch is quite a bit bigger than the 13 inch. The 16 inch is about an inch deeper than the 13 inch MacBook Pro, and it's about two inches wider. It's also slightly taller when it's in clamshell mode, and you're gonna notice it's decidedly heavier. So if you're looking for the most portable of the two machines, the 13 is obviously the way to go. But that was really the case before as well, so that's not anything new with the 16 inch. If you were looking at the 15 before, you're not gonna all of a sudden swing to the 13 inch. The 16 is not that much different than the 15 inch MacBook Pro. So if you've seen the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you should be pretty familiar with the size difference of the 16 inch. It just makes it a little bit larger in each of those dimensions. When you open things up, you're gonna notice the displays. So the display on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro has smaller bezels around the sides. Apple did a good job at reducing those and the 13 inch, which has its existing design, does not have as small bezels. So they are a little bit larger and it looks a little bit more dated, but not anything that would really be that concerning. It's not gonna sway you one way or the other just for that small amount of bezel decrease. Each of the machines has a touch bar sitting above the keyboard, though the 13 inch MacBook Pro still has a digital escape key on the touch bar itself rather than a physical escape key as has been excised on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. The keyboards are also different. The 13 inch is still using Apple's butterfly switch mechanism, which has been a little bit problematic for users over the past three years. It has gotten better and the most recent generation has been tweaked slightly to be a little bit more reliable, but if you're most concerned about that, then maybe you should hold off until early next year where we could see a new 13 inch MacBook Pro with the new scissor switch mechanism that Apple adopted for the 16 inch. The 13 inch MacBook Pro also has the blockier arrow keys. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has independent arrow keys that have the inverted T design and it's a little bit easier to navigate just by touch without having to look down. So if you use the arrow keys a lot and you're still fumbling, I was still fumbling on my 15 inch MacBook Pro after three years of using it. I still was not used to having the, uh, the larger arrow keys on the left and the right. So I really did like and appreciate the inverted T design on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's a big thing maybe hold off or go with the 16 inch. But it seems like a minor thing for choosing between two machines. Really, I think it's going to come down to size for a lot of people out there. Now let's go ahead and talk about the performance and specs between the two units. Looking at the base configurations of the 13 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, there's a pretty big difference between the two as far as specs and power are concerned. The 13 inch MacBook Pro starts off with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core eighth generation Intel Core i5 processor, which can turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz. It also packs Intel Iris Plus graphics 645. It also only comes with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of SSD storage. On the other hand, the 16 inch MacBook Pro starts off with a 2.6 gigahertz, six core, ninth generation Intel Core i7 processor, which can turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz and packs AMD Radeon Pro 5300M graphics with four gigs of GDDR6 memory. Apple also starts you out with 16 gigs of new DDR4 RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. 
looking at the top of the line units, the top of the line 13 inch MacBook Pro, which will run you just over $3,000, can get up to a 2.8 gigahertz quad core eighth generation Intel Core i7 processor with Intel Iris Plus graphics 655, and the top of the line 16 inch MacBook Pro, which will run you well over $6,000, get up to 2.4 gigahertz eight core ninth generation Intel Core i9 processor, which can turbo boost up to five gigahertz and packs AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with eight gigs of GDDR6 memory. It also can be maxed out with 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM and eight terabytes of SSD storage. The 13 inch MacBook Pro can only get 16 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of SSD storage. In terms of actual usage, the 16 inch MacBook Pro has a ton more potential than the 13 inch. So if you're looking at the spec'd out units, there's a huge delta between those two. Though you're gonna pay for that privilege going between a $3,100 maximum versus a $6,100 maximum, it's a huge difference in terms of price as well as performance. So if you're looking at performance as being the biggest factor, you have a lot more room to expand and decide and configure your 16 inch MacBook Pro than you do the 13 inch. But the 13 inch is no slouch. There's still some decent performance there for that base level machine, even upgrading it. There's still a lot there to work with. So if you're looking for a good, powerful machine, but you don't need an actual pro workstation, then the 13 inch MacBook Pro is definitely something to consider. Now let's talk about different features on the 16 inch MacBook Pro versus the 13. A couple of the big things you're gonna notice is the speakers and the microphones. Apple really upgraded the microphones on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. And if you wanna hear what they sound like for yourself, check out our top features video where we give you a full recording playback of what they sound and actually the voiceover of that video. So be sure to check that out if you wanna hear how impressive those microphones sound. The microphones on the 13 inch just aren't as powerful in comparison. You're not gonna be able to use them for any production level stuff like we could with the 16 inch. You're also notice a big discrepancy between the speakers. Not only does the 13 inch have a just a stereo set of speakers, the 16 inch MacBook Pro had a huge upgrade over the 15 inch. They sound a lot better. There's a new, I think there's six speakers in there with dual force canceling drivers, woofers that will prevent it from shaking around when there's a lot of audio playing and it even supports Dolby Atmos. So you can really get impressive sound whether you're writing the score, doing the score for your next movie, or whether you're just watching Apple TV+, Plus, whatever you're gonna be doing with those speakers, there's a huge difference. So if uh, speakers and playing back music or content is important, there's a big difference and you should lean towards that 16 inch unit. Another difference is battery life. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has an additional hour of battery life over the 13 inch. So if you're looking for the longest lasting machine between the two Pro units, the 16 inch is the way to go. You can go 11 hours using regular work versus only 10 hours on the 13 inch. That's about a 10% gain year over year. Finally, we're going to talk about price. The 13 inch MacBook Pro usually starts at around 1300. Though of course there's deals going on all the time. The 16 inch MacBook Pro starts at 2400 their big price jump between the two units. So price and size are gonna be the biggest deciding factors between the two. If you're looking for power, that can also come into play hugely because there is such a difference between them. But if you can't afford that much on the high end 16 inch unit, then again, it comes back to price and form factor. If you wanna lug a 16 inch around versus the 13 inch. Now, if you do lean towards the 13 inch, we may say hold off for a little bit. There are a lot of deals running now around the holidays, but early next year, it seems Apple could refresh the 13 inch with maybe perhaps smaller bezels and an updated scissor switch keyboard, knocking out that butterfly design. So if the keyboard is kind of worrying you a little bit, or if you don't mind waiting, we'd say hold off until maybe early to mid next year when we could see a possible 13 inch refresh, including updated processors. So what do you guys think? That is the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Which one do you guys prefer? Let us know down below in the comments which one you're gonna be picking up or which one you already have. Let me know on Twitter too so we can just continue the conversation at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you wanna pick up the 13 or the 16 inch unit, check out the links down below in the description because we have the best deals around on the internet, including on our Apple Insider Price Guide. Otherwise, we'll check you in the next video. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see and follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. 
And until next time, we'll see you later.